Hey gang, it's Bailey Wiki. So watch this. I approach this door. Hmm. Locked. Let's pull out our lockpick kit and ah, success. Okay. We're trying to sneak into this tavern, a back room of this tavern. And we're gonna have to get through a few locked doors to do it. This is after hours. So okay, on to another door. Let's see. Okay, I don't I can't actually pick this lock. What's this? Ah. Skeleton key, skelly key, right? So we'll take that. Just added this skelly key to my inventory. So let's try that door again. Aha, the key worked. So now we go in through this door and we're in this back room and I see a couple of chests here. Hmm, some kind of magic chest. It wants a password. How about Carlap? Ah, success, and the chest is open, and we found some infernal iron. Excellent. So what you just saw is some of the functionality of a new module called Lock and Key. As it says on the tin, it's got you covered for most Lock and Key functionality. Sure, you can absolutely do this with Monk's Active Tiles, and many of you have seen our tutorials on that, but Lock and Key, which comes from the developer Cybot, by the way, is a great solution for this very common use case. And as I have come to expect from this developer, it's very thorough, it's very simple, and it integrates well with other apps. So that's the subject of the tutorial today. Let's jump in and see how I did this. As usual, all of the assets you see in this tutorial are available on my Patreon. This stuff comes from the most recent release, for example. If you want to support our channel and uh, or you're looking for tens of thousands of assets like maps and modular map sets and prefabs and tiles and sounds. Just uh, you can subscribe for one month and get everything in the library. Okay, so just before I start, I uh, realize that I've got lock and key installed and I also have uh, item piles installed. This is another uh, module from another developer, but lock and key integrates with item piles. So a lot of the stuff that you just saw me do involving like chests and things like that does require item piles. And you can see on the lock and key website um, where the integrations happen with that, but I'll demonstrate that today. So first we want to go into the module settings. If we go into configure settings and we go down to lock and key, let me walk you through some of these settings. So using GM quick controls, this is this allows the GM to use the special lock related controls listed at the bottom. And that's what these are here. And I highly recommend them. It's using like shift, right click, alt, right click, that kind of thing to do as you're creating, it's really kind of like architecting your, your locks, gives you some cool stuff to be able to do there. Uh, then allow player locking. So that allows players to lock or unlock objects or, uh, or doors. You can also decide on a case by case basis. So I leave this toggled on and then on case by case basis, I might turn it off. Start as locked, so newly registered locks starting as locked. You might want to turn that on as well. Locking distance I have set to five. This is the distance over which you know a lock can actually be used by players. They have to be close enough to manipulate the lock. Uh, always open owned, so players can always open owned tokens even if they are locked. Uh, you'll see an example of that later, but we can give permission to a chest or something like that for a player to own. In case you want to give them their own chest, for example, at their like headquarters. Um, showing all lock interactions. I leave this checked off, although we can try to check it on and see what kind of mileage we get in our tutorial today. But it does says always, always show all interaction options for locks for the evil GM in you. So uh, let's see what that looks like. Um, uh, prevent key use while paused. Uh, that should speak for itself. I leave that ticked on. Uh, type of key items. So I want keys to be classified as tools. You can see some of the help text here as well. As as uh, is usual with Cybot's modules, they were actually written for Pathfinder 2E. Although as you'll see, they work great with uh, D&D 5E and other systems. Um, but just keep in mind that there might be a different kind of categorization uh, that your your lock picks may follow. Um, there is also the ability to open up a menu when you're creating a key, uh, to help you kind of navigate the parts of that, um, using a key name as an ID. So if keys should be considered 
as an, if they if their name should be considered as additional ID for the purpose of opening locks. I keep this on because I do want to be able to name my keys, maybe something specific. Although you may also find that uh, just using the key IDs will be a little bit more specific, um, and you, you're, you're probably going to want to use both. The crit systems for uh, breaking things and stuff like that, you can see here. Um, for example, this has got the PF2E crit system. I've got it set to NAT20. Lockpick items. So names are compendium IDs, which is recommended, of a lockpicking item. Uh, dash if no item is necessary. And you separate them with a colon. So this is where you can put the names of items in here, I believe. So you can put like uh, lockpick and uh, maybe lockpick. And things do seem to be case sensitive, so you might want to ch you know change those up a little bit as well. Um, uh, mention lockpick items. So if the use lockpick items should be mentioned in the chat, that'll populate it over in the chat for you. Um, removing the lockpick on a critical fail is really interesting, right? So you can lose a lockpick if you're playing Baldur's Gate three, and obviously this is, I think this is a core mechanic of. D&D uh, &D 5e, you can click that on as well. Super awesome. Um, you can jam the lock on a critical lock pick fail. So you can use one or both of those. I believe you can also pick on a case-by-case -case basis, but we'll see. Um, uh, and then if it's been jammed, then you can make it so that keys can't be used on it anymore. So great uh, if you want to add some repercussions if players make certain kinds of decisions, right? Then you have the ability to act, add the lockpick formula. And I think this is standard for the different systems. You can find more help on the GitHub page, but this just shows you like how it's calculating the lockpick formula and also how it calculates the break lock formula. In this case, it's using the actor strength lock. So if your system doesn't use these particular flags and uh, in, in you know value fields, then uh, this gives you the ability to customize it for your system, which is super thoughtful of Cybot. So make, and broke, uh, make broken locks unlockable, another thing that you can decide uh, globally, and then multi-success during combat only. So uh, this lets you set it to where if you need multiple successes, then you can do that only during a combat session. Out of combat, it'll ignore the, the multiple, multiple successes in a row that you need to do. Uh, here's a reminder of the GM controls. It'd be nice to have this pop up as a help maybe in other places. I might make a request to see these controls also get added to some of the other dialogue screens, but they're super helpful. And it's mostly, again, just if you look at them, just right click. It's shift, alt, and control for the most part. I recommend enabling the message pop-ups if it's not enabled for you. It just helps your players and you know what's going on when you're interacting with these locks. And uh, playing the lock sounds and things like that, you might also like to turn on as well. And then you can see the player controls here, very similar to the GM controls. They're going to have to know to right-click, or you'll tell them to right-click, shift right-click, or alt-right-click, depending on if they want to use a key to pick a lock or to break a lock. If you're not familiar with item piles module, have not done a tutorial on it yet. It's a great module. I think it's one of the most popular ones being able to drop loot and uh, on the on the canvas for your players to drop loot, to trade with each other, to create, you know, backpacks and chests and things where you can open them up. So item piles is just a really, really great module. It's got a ton of settings, as you can see. So I'm not going to go through what you should do here. I think I left everything default for this tutorial but just take a look at that and see if you uh, want to learn about that module as well. Now, just like Cybot's other modules, Lock and Key does have its own macro compendium, and you can see you've got macros for the GM and for the player. So if you don't want your players to have to remember how to break a lock, pick a lock, or use a key, they do have macros that can, that can do that. And then you've got some macros that will replicate also for you the right-click functionality in case you'd rather and prefer to use macros as a GM. Okay, so let's look at how I built this first door. All right, I'm going to go into my wall settings. I'm going to click on my door. And I've got these different tabs open. I'm going to go to lock and key tab. Now, uh, first of all, I want this door to be lockable, right? So that way it can work with the system. So you need to check that on. ID key. So the IDs which can lock or unlock this lock, and you separate them with a colon. Notice there's no space or anything else. You literally just separate them with a colon. 
These are IDs of locks that I've created that will work with this door. That's if I want to use these particular locks. Now, we've talked about being able to use um, keys that are other kinds of keys. And I would, uh, and that would be like the names of the, the actual keys that work with this, right? So I can add that here. I can add Skelly key, for example, and that's the key that I created earlier. And that would make the Skelly key work with this lock. Notice um, I have the spaces, the capitalize, it is capital sensitive. So you do want to make sure that you do uh, make that exactly the same name and the same words that the key is named. Passwords is where you can have a password open up the lock. You saw me use that before when I used Carlac. You can put anything in here. You can you can create multiple passwords, right? This is the password an idiot would have on their luggage. if You watch Spaceballs, uh, but really great to be able to put passwords in or it can just be a code, right? If you want to change, just a quick tip, if you want to change some of the dialogues under passwords, you go here to the custom pop-ups. So if the lock is locked, you can uh, give a, a this kind of clue or something like that. If you can't pick, you can say, if you want to say something custom, you can say that here. And this is where the password dialog prompt lets you, uh, you know, give a hint to the password, for example. Just to keep going, here is where you can say the lock is jammed. You can have this get set based on those global rules I showed you earlier. So if they attempt to lock pick and they critically fail, you can have it jam the lock and they can't pick it anymore. Uh, lock DC is where you can set your DC for it. I've got mine set to 10. Notice if you set it to negative one, you can't use a lock pick at all on that door. If there is a special lock pick that you want to use, you can use the ID or the name, and you can, again, do multiple entries. In this case, I have lock pick. You may, if you have lots of lock picks floating in your world, you may play around with uh, capitalization because I believe it is capital sensitive. A lock break DC. So if you want them to allow them to break the lock, you can give it a DC or leave it at minus one so that you can prevent that. And required lock picking successes. So maybe they have to do it a few times. You can, you know, make it to, you know, two out of three successes, for example. Really, really thoughtful stuff by Cybot. Okay, now let's look at how to create a chest, for example. I created an NPC called chest. And then I went into the chest and I said configure pile, right? So let's create a new actor. Let's call it chest. Non-player character. All right. Now, because I use Tom Cartos, I'm going to type in chest. I'm going to use this great closed chest image from Tom Cartos. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to configure this. This is actually the item piles button. And under main settings, I'm going to go ahead and enable this. Interaction distance, one unit. And change its description, override all sorts of things. I'm going to call this a container. And I'm going to say it's closed and it's locked. And the image path that I'm going to use is that same one that I just used. And it's open image path. Use that. Okay, so for the locked, for the closing sound path, I'm going to use one of my sounds. So in the Bailey Wiki modules and the Towns module there, uh, I've got some, a bunch of different sounds. I'm just going to use this little simple wood open sound. And I'm going to use that same thing for the opening sound and the closing sound. She took this sound from Boundary's uh, core sound uh, settings. And that should be good for my chest. And I can drag that, and I'll just use this as a template of chest. Drag my chest out to the scene. And you know what? I want to add a little drop shadow to it, make it look like the chest is standing up a little bit. And you know, I want to change this. I don't want to ever have it display the chest. And then while I have that selected, I'm going to select this chest. 
go to its prototype token, assign that token. And let's see, that should work. Now let's drag my chest back out. Perfect. You know what? I might even do this. I'm going to make a small chest. Right? Make that even smaller. This is now a token realized. So I'm just holding down shift and I'm putting it exactly where I want it. Maybe the chest is just kind of back in the room like that. And that's how you make your chests, right? And when I click on it, I can see my item pile screen. Now I'm going to double right click it. And that's going to get me the token configuration screen. That's where I can again change the size if I'd like to, um, change anything about the chest. But I'm going to come over here to lock and key. And I'm going to say, okay, this is lockable. I want it to start locked. And uh, I want it to only work with the password Carlac, right? Uh, the lock DC, I don't want any other way to open it besides that password. My custom pop-up. I'll give it some sort of hint. Go back into my config. And my lock sound. Okay, well, I want to use a metal sound. Love it. And uh, if I want to do any special lockpick formulas or override formulas, I can do that here. And otherwise, I will update my token. Now, notice I have all lowercase carlock this time. And of course, I still need to add something to my item pile. What I want to do is open this up and with that open, drag my infernal item. Now I've got my items in my, in my chest. Maybe I want to add, you know, 150 gold as well. Perfect. Now I've got all my pieces in there that my players can come and loot. If it, if the lid is open, you can close it here to put it in its closed state. And it should be ready to go. Put a player and we'll attempt to open it. Now realize I'm in the GM view. If I want to test it as a player, I actually have to log in as a player. The way you do that is you open up a separate session. You find your invitation links, you copy it, you open up a browser window, and you log in as a player. So I'm going to open up a browser window in Brave. Now that I'm in here, now I'm logged in as a player. I'm going to try to interact with it. I can't. I get the locked sound. So then I right-click it and ask me for the password. Enter my password. Now it's unlocked. Now I can regular left-click it. It opens the chest, shows me the open chest artwork, and I can take everything that's inside of it. Or if this is my chest going forward, I can leave it. Now, notice I also there's other settings where you can uh, make the chest disappear, like you saw before when it gets looted, or you can have the chest remain there in place. Now, the last thing I need to show you is how to actually make a key. Just as a cheat, I'm going to leave our keys uh, up here that we can press. So shift right click to create a new key for the clocks uh, for the for the lock. So we'll shift and right click. Remember I'm logged into the GM and it says what is the key name? Right. So let's give it a name, skeleton key. And then the key target folder. Well, that depends on what your folders are in your items tab. So I've got a folder in my items tab uh, called key. So I'm going to stick it in there. Now we've got a new key called skeleton key. In my keys tab, we have skeleton key. And you notice I've already made a skeleton key. Now you can alt right click to toggle the token lock, right? So if we alt right click, chest is locked, chest is now unlocked. That just helps you as the GM to toggle that really easily. Uh, and then control right click to copy the keys lock. Let's open this up and just remind ourselves what the keys locks are. Well, the keys were generated when I created that key and it used the key ID. So if I open up these skeleton keys and I go to go to the lock in key tab, which you notice you have a lock in key tab now on keys and on items, it gives me the ID right here. And you can actually change that ID on this. This makes this ID very unique to this particular item. You can do cool things like the removing the key once it's used, uh, just to help your players keep their, their inventories clean. 
can uh, have it override lockpick formulas, give it its, uh, its own special kind of capabilities, that kind of thing. And again, you can just add the name as well. So if you want just to say um, skeleton key, anything with that name opens it, this will work also. Now, what I haven't tested is whether these IDs work from compendiums. So if you're saving keys to compendiums and then pulling them back out again, I believe it changes the IDs. So just be aware that that may change on you might have to stay with naming it. I'll let the developer or others who know better tell us in the comments. Now, I couldn't get these next two to work copying ID keys. It could be they just haven't tested it enough. I found it just as easy if I needed to copy uh, key IDs just to open them up from the keys or just to grab them from this field here. So uh, you guys can try it and tell me if you got this to work, but I found I, I didn't really wholly need it to be able to create things. But in this way, so if we wanted to create a key now, you can see we've already got it. The one thing, the one tip I'll give you, so you know, in our items, we have this key thing, wherever you put it in your keys. I'm gonna grab this Skelly key, and I'm gonna drop one on the screen and it's going to create a new pile, right? That just means it's an item that now players can interact with. That item is treated like a, like a token. So I've got this key, but I just want to change its artwork. So I'm going to double right click it. I'm going to go to its appearance. I'm going to go into here. And actually in my stuff, in my, in the Bailey wiki modules, um, I've got some really cool keys. So I'm going to search for key using dig down. And pretty quickly, I find these keys. You can see the artwork on the left there. And I'm going to grab one that I think is cool. So let's use this really old style key. We'll select that. If we update it, you can see we've got a key now that's a little bit different artwork. Now I want to change this around a little bit. One, I don't want anything to uh, appear as a pop up. So I'll say it's never displayed. And from an appearance perspective, change it to 0.5, and then we'll drop its scale down beyond that even. We'll update our token. And you can see it creates this little tiny key that is at scale to our background there. We can kind of move it around. It looks very subtle, right? It just blends right into the environment. But that's what you want, right? So now if your players are looking around, uh, they can discover that there's a key there. They can double click on it they can see that they can, if a player was clicking on this, they'd be able to take that key and put it into their inventory. And then that item pile would disappear and that player now uh, owns that key. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you'd like to see more tutorials. If you have, uh, let me know in the comments if there are specific modules that you're like, man, I really wish somebody would do a tutorial on this module. Uh, we always like getting that kind of feedback and it's very uh, possible and probable that we will do a tutorial if we get uh, enough feedback that you want to see something in a particular module. Uh, in the meantime, have fun with Lock and Key. Great job to Cybot for another great module. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. In the meantime, have fun, everybody, making your maps.